Well, yeah, we've so finished main session. Um, Joshy Worrell will debut for us, um, which is great for, for Josh and the group. He's, he's well liked amongst the group. We had a bit of a laugh today at training where he found out in his car. Um, some of the boys enjoy a practical joke. But it's good for Joshy. He's played, uh, he, he was in some really good form about three weeks ago, and we, we made the choice at that point to stick with the team we had in. Um, his form, he's been doing some really hard work down back under pressure at the SNFL level, you know, we're having 50 or 60 inside 50s against. And so we think it's re we think it's time, just prior to the bye, give him a little bit of a, a look. Um, and we're pretty confident that, that he'll play well at the level. So it's nice to have him come in. And then Sam Berry's got through the protocols for concussion and, and he's fine, he's ready to go. So no symptoms there and he'll come in as well. We, I won't give you the outs just yet. What sort of role does, does Josh play? Well, he plays sort of that, um, not, not so much key back, he's uh, different to Butts in that he'll play on that sort of third, second, third tall, uh, but he can also play small as well if, if need be. But with the mix that we'll, we'll have down there, he'll, pl he'll play on that second or third tall on the weekend. Um, the challenge with that is we're not sure exactly which way they'll go yet. Um, yeah, they've got some injuries themselves, so we'll have to wait and see. But that's where we feel this week's a good one for him, you know, with the flexibility he brings, that um, he'll be able to play a number of different matchups. Who was behind, I guess, the uh, practical joke this morning? I'll give you one guess. <laughs> no, he's got too many practical jokes at the moment, the Texan. Um, <laughs> the boy who cried wolf, unfortunately, I'm trying to teach him that story. At some point, it's going to backfire on him. Is he playing? Is he all right? Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, Tex, um, again, I don't want to go into the medical side of it because I don't, I don't know that I'm not the professional in the area, but um, he has got a small strain in an area to uh, top of the calf in behind his knee. It's, um, but it's not something that's going to affect him at all. He feels cherry ripe. He, you know, he says, I'm, I'm ready to go. He's had no issues the last few days. He trained really well today. So he's super confident that he'll, he'll be fine. Um, we're, we've still got to train and we'll train up there with our captain's run. Uh, not many of the guys have played up on the ground, so it'll be good to get out there and have a run around. And we're, we're really confident, he's really confident that, that he'll be fine. Do you take maybe an Elliot or a Billy just in case? Yeah, we'll take 24. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll take one of those guys. As, and unfortunately with that, that means they won't play, we won't get them back in time. Um, but that's just something we have to do, you know, just in case. But we're pretty confident that Tex will play and that unfortunately one of those guys won't play this weekend. Some, uh, some athletes, when they don't perform to the level, often will rue that. So like a bad golf or a bad cricket, a bad golf might carry a bad shot with him for a while. Have you carried the Collingwood loss during the week? Are you over it now? And, you know, is, there, is there a time when you finally wake up and go, right, I'm done with that? Yeah, and it was a little longer than the norm f for me personally. Um, and for the team, I think we were we were really disappointed post game the the way um, we'd performed more than anything. Um, you know, it was an opportunity for us. Uh, credit to Collingwood, they got the job done and we didn't. Uh, that one stung a little bit, but you know you move on. You you actually go away and work on what you need to work on. And at the moment, we've got a lot of things we're working on. Um, we had a great week on the track. You know, as you said, it takes a little bit of time, but we recovered and we're ready to go by by Monday, Tuesday, and we're straight back into it. Um, trained really well. I thought the intensity today was at a new level. The voice, you know, areas that we're talking about, when you have a, a young, inexperienced group playing together, often the communication or the lack of communication is what can cost you. So we've done a fair bit of work on that. Um, I'm sure some, you know, these things, will, these hurdles will keep coming up, but uh, we're doing some really good work in that space. How do you address a start? Start to the game? Yeah, well, I mean, you, you, made, you made mention of your first quarter last week against Collingwood. How do you avoid a repeat? Similar to the third quarter stuff. I mean, the third quarter is a, a trend, right? So we, we changed a little bit of what we did at half time, and I thought the guys came out and responded. We lost the third quarter um, somehow, but we started really well after half time. We came out with a real focus on it. Um, the first quarters are not a trend for us, it's, it's not something that's coming up regularly. We're not going to change too much about the way we go about it. We, we weren't right to go on the weekend for whatever reason, maybe a percent, two percent off across the board. Um, in review, that was discussed. We don't know why. Uh, 
as I said, if it's if it becomes something that's week after week and we're just getting done in first quarters, well then we'll look into it. At the moment, we'll stick with our, our pre-game routine, the way we go in the day prior, and um, I know the guys will respond from last week. What did you change at half time? Uh, we just got back out on the ground slightly earlier and a little bit less information at the break. Um, it's amazing how when you watch a game of footy on TV, that break goes for a fair bit of time. When you're in the rooms and you're part of that, that group, it, it goes that fast. You, know, you feel like you get down to the change rooms and before you know it, you're going back out. So as a coaching group, we limited what information we had for them um, and we were a little sharper to get <clears throat> back out on the ground and give them a, a couple more minutes to, to get themselves going and, and be amongst them, you know, the group. Um, yeah, it seemed, to, it seemed we started the quarter reasonably well. And there's no doubt they had a, a focus on, look, this is something that's let us down. So they were right on edge. Now, you'd, you'd like for your group to be like that every minute of every game. That's where we're trying to get to. So was, was that a deliberate focus then? Was, was that with your third quarter record in mind on, on the weekend? Because that is a trend. How do you address that? Yeah, and that, that was the focus. I mean, that was a trend we knew about three weeks ago. Um, guys, we haven't really pulled one yet. We haven't... And it hasn't been a disaster. You know, you can lose a quarter. We lost the quarter, third quarter on the weekend, I think by a couple of points. It was a kick just prior to the siren. So you've got to be careful with some stats. You, you know, you can manipulate them however you like. But that was one that, you know, we weren't coming out after the break necessarily as well as we starting we were starting games. And, and just a small focus on it. And we know we can change things. We know we can change things really quickly. We've been able to do that the entire year, things that we aren't quite working for us, <clears throat> you know, we, we get to work and um, unfortunately at this point we've got things coming up in other areas when we get something right, you know, the wheel turns, but it's part of us developing as a group. I think you said after the game, you know, you're happy with how the group's progressing, you know, you're on track, I mean, where do you see the club is in terms of the rebuild? We all know the rebuild's happening, I mean, where do you see the teams, you know, like, you feel People talk about, you know, on a clock, you know, is it you know, 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, you know, trying to, yeah. <laughs> the analogy, no, I know the analogy you're after, yeah. yeah. Are we halfway, are we quarter, are we, yeah. Uh, I can't give you exactly where we're at percentage-wise, but what, what I can say is when you talk about rebuilding, you talk about <clears throat> building a culture, building a, a workplace that people want to come to work. Um, we've, we've built that. We've got a group that want to be here. Um, you know, we've just signed another two, so that's 13 now that have committed to being part of where we're heading. So they're, they're on board uh, in Fog and Murph. Um, we've got a lot of good people around the footy club. So from an off-field point of view, we're, doing, we're kicking goals. Uh, On-field, we've got some really positive things happening. You know, we've got a group that, that I believe play a, a finals brand of footy. They embrace that, we really enjoy that. Almost to the point of sometimes that, that can cost us. And that's, you know, areas we're working on at the moment is that sort of that, our hunt versus you know how we shape the ground. Um, you know we're in games of footy. We've we've beaten some really strong sides. Um, we've lost yeah you know, some games we shouldn't have lost. So um, from an on-field point of view, as far as our rebuild goes, we're making progress. But we've still got a lot a long way to go. We've still got a lot of work to do. Um, but I'm really proud of what a young group's putting out there at the moment as far as a, a brand of footy. Um, you know, you can, they can walk off the ground at this point, and I know our supporters, well, I hope our supporters are enjoying that, that footy. Um, we'd love to get a few more wins for them so they can, we can all celebrate together, and I've got no doubt that'll come. Why do you think we've beaten a couple of sides that no one gave you a chance of beating in, in Geelong and Melbourne, and then the favouritism tag hasn't actually sat too well with you guys? Is that just a product of having a young team, or, or why, why do you think that's been? I think we've been favourites once. <laughs> you saying that's a trend? Freo, um, Hawthorne might have picked us. I think, I think Hawthorne might have had us a dollar ninety. I'm not that I'm a punter. <laughs> dollar, <laughs> dollar eighty, dollar ninety. But yeah, we were favourites. Uh, Collingwood. Um, we haven't been favourites a lot during the year, so it's, it's not as though we're um, not living up to the expectation. Uh, although on the weekend we we didn't perform. I, I, and we feel we didn't perform to the level we had for weeks prior. Um, but yeah, I, I don't see it as our guys aren't playing to expectation. I think they enjoy a challenge. I think they really enjoy the challenge of playing the best teams in the competition. Um, 
sometimes you can see that with with young players when they come in and they you know even for an individual matchup in a game where they you know there's a, a high level of respect for the, the opponent you're coming up against sometimes as a coaching group the challenge is for you to make sure that that is what they're living day in day out because everyone at this level is a very very good footballer no matter how long they've played footy for um, and that's something we'll keep working through you know we'll keep working on when the expectation's there to win the ability to actually get the job done and we had our opportunities on the weekend right to the last 30 seconds of the game we you know, one or two decisions the right way maybe we we pinched that one and we're not talking about it you mentioned um great for fog and murphy was in here before <coughs> um have you figured out now where the best place to play darcy fog is <laughs> I'd, I'd be lying if I said I had, um, and, and we're not in a rush to, to make that decision. I, I think the best, um, or the, the positive thing in all of this is, is Darcy's shown that he's actually can play some pretty good footy around the on ball, you know, and um, we know he's a very good forward, especially when he's given, um, I guess, the, the man status, we, you know, where he's played that deeper position, he's able to keep himself in, with, in range of goal. Shows how deadly he is when he does get the ball, although on the weekend was the first time we hadn't kicked um, you know, straight. Both Tex and Fogg had one of those days, which, again, not, not a trend. Um, but I think it, it's we've got to be careful not to try and put him in a spot and say, that's it. Um, even in games, we'd love the opportunity, if things aren't quite going right, to put a big-bodied uh, Darcy Foggy in around the footy and, and let him crash into a few opposition. Um, I liked what he was doing. I liked the way he was developing in there. But I think you'd find he's a lot more comfortable as a player playing forward of the ball because he's done that for a, for a lot longer through his junior career. Do you give him a chance just to go and rattle Brad Crouch's cage for 30 seconds at the start and then <laughs> bugger off forward? Are we, are we playing Brad this week? <laughs> um, yeah, maybe. Maybe if he's up for it. Um, oh, look, Brad's a, Brad's a great player. So I know the boys will be, they'll be keen as mustard to, to get out there and and have a go against him. Um, whether Dars gets in there or not, it's, it might be one of those things that we'll see how our mids are going. On Brad, I mean, I think you were just looking back at your first um, press conference at Adelaide Cross Coaching, you said, you know, he's an important player, play, you, I think you spoke to him an hour before. Just looking back at it all, when was the period when you kind of realised that Brad wanted to move away from the club? Well, not, not until right towards the end. I mean, conversations we had throughout the year were, were all about where we were heading, and, and that's, you know, that can be the case. Um, you know, I'm not sure if Brad had made his mind up until right near the end either, uh, to be honest. It's, um, you know, I'm mindful Brad's made a decision to go to another club, and we, we wish him all the best on that. As I said before, we're, we're signing a lot of players, and you know, another two today. It's a really positive thing for our club. That's what we'll focus on is those that are going to be here and those will be here into the future and we'll continue to try and add to this group. Easy. How long until Tex puts pen to paper? Well, we, we said around mid-year, so, you know, we're there. Um, and it's similar, we, you know, we've got Lynchy and Tails, Matty Crouch, all, all in conversation. So, you know, these are, these are conversations that, that go on informally as well as, you know, with our list management. They'll continue to go on. Um, you know, when you when you look at them, we, we don't want to talk about one more than the other. But Tex, because he's playing at the moment and he's in some pretty rare form, I think everyone's just wants it to happen. But just be patient. Just be patient. What does Cairns hold for? Is it a bit dewy up in uh, Cairns? Well, what I, conditions like we know? I, I think I played there years and years and years ago, and it was you know it was slippery. And <laughs> don't get that vision. Um, <laughs> but I've heard it's not at the moment. I heard the humidity's not quite at that level, so 27, 28, it'll be, it'll be warmer than what we're getting at the moment on the East Coast, but we'll, um, or sorry, in Adelaide, but um, I think the guys will look forward to that, you know, getting up there and, and getting the body moving, but yeah, I, as far as we're aware, it's not that slippery at this point, but it is a night game, so we'll just have to wait and see, but we'll be ready for whatever it is. We'll get up and train, as I said, with our captain's run and get a feel for the Oval. If it is, does that put a greater emphasis on your skills, given that I let you down against Collingwood? If it's slippery, yeah. or, or either way, e either way, we need to we need to be um, better with the footy, both both around the ground. We turned the ball over, you know, far too much last week, and we we didn't convert in front of goal. You do that in the wet conditions or the dry. That's 
it's not going to change anything. That, that, the turnover score at the moment is off, off of some of our decision making and execution. Uh, we worked on it for the week and we'll, you know, we have had some, some games where we've really got that going well. So you know, we want to get back to that. And we'll need to because St Kilda are a side that if you give them opportunities, they will score. Um, they're a pretty good team you know, when they're up and going. Is, uh, is, is Lavio okay? He limped off the track uh, or pushed up a bit earlier anyway. Yeah, he's fine. I actually came in. He's He's got a bit of a sore toe. He, he Whether he got trodden on, he said, oh, I'm not sure if I was trodden on or whether it's just got a bit sore through his toe, but um, he'll be fine. He'll be good to go. Are you going to take a charter flight up to Queensland this time? So I guess what is it all about when you're up there? Uh, yeah, charter flight over, and I, I believe we take um, commercial back. I think we, we come back... Um, you know, via other capital cities, so a little bit of a longer flight back, but uh, yeah, we'll get the commercial flight over direct and um, settle in. That obviously, the captain's run straight after that. I guess coming back on a commercial flight, I mean, obviously, you probably have to a very, a very direct message to everyone after what happened last last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and and again, learnings for um, you know we got it wrong, so. There were very direct messages, um, and we'll get it right. We'll make sure we get it right. And Wilson, just on that, the person you were sitting next to the person that took the photo, how did you feel about that situation? I don't, it doesn't really matter how I feel about it. It's more about, you know, we, we got it wrong. Um, we cop our hit for that, and um, we'll move on. We'll make sure we don't get it wrong again. Thanks, guys. Thanks, appreciate it. Thanks, guys.